One thing I guess to understand is that the AI is here and it will be pervasive <laughs> and uh, you will need to understand how to use it in your job or someone else will understand and they will be a lot more productive and uh, perhaps uh, 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 a lot more efficient. Welcome Ivan Terapov. Thank you so much to bring your Microsoft knowledge to uh, AUA TV. It's very nice to meet you. Thanks for having me here. Nice yeah. to meet you too. What mainly um, people want to hear from you is telling, basically give us a, a, a bit about what you are doing here and, and your expertise when it comes to AI. Yeah, certainly. I work for Microsoft and we have this group called Health and Life Sciences Division. So my focus is uh, AI and healthcare. And uh, the way I describe my job to my kids and people is that uh, I help Microsoft understand what we should be doing in AI in healthcare space and how do we make it easy for the professionals out there to consume and reap the benefits of the, uh, this fantastic achievements that we've all accomplished and we've all seen uh, on these, uh, from these tools recently. And in this case, obviously, the, the attention is going towards urologists, but how much of a black box is AI when it's applied to say something like oncology? Yeah, AI in general, um, uh, you know, so first when we, when we uh, uh, talk about AI, we think uh, large language models, right? So everybody has interacted probably with ChatGPT, you know, you can type something, it comes back with an answer. But AI is actually much bigger than that, right? Text is not all there is. There are AIs that work with images, AI that work with videos. And uh, a lot of the efforts of the uh, scientific community and a lot of work that I do is about understanding how these things come together and how we combine, how we build AI that can understand these multiple modalities. And of course, uh, this system, they're generative by nature, right? So stochastic by nature. And what uh, uh, happens inside is not always like predictable. And sometimes results can come in uh, different uh, depending on uh, you know what, what seed you, what input you, you give. And uh, a lot of research is spent in trying to uh, make them more predictable or make them more explainable, right? So AI will remain a bit of a black box for all the time, right? But uh, it's kind of a black box as much as you and I are black boxes, right? I'm asking you questions, I kind of know what to expect, and then you come back to me, you ask me questions, I come back with answers. So it's about uh, developing trust. It's about uh, developing ways to uh, have AI double check the answers and provide you reasoning for the answers. And that's what we spend a lot of the time uh, when applying AI to healthcare, you know, understanding how to ground responses, understanding how to uh, provide context, which is patient record or institutional knowledge. So that's where I think a lot of this demystifying will happen over the next few years. What is the most important thing for a urologist to know about AI? Yeah, it's hard to pick out one thing, but I think like what's the, uh, uh, well, w one thing I guess to understand is that the AI is here and it will be pervasive <laughs> and uh, you will need to understand how to use it in your job or someone else will understand and they will be a lot more productive and uh, perhaps uh, 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 a lot more efficient. So. We can't fight it at this yeah. point. You so, have uh, to adapt. Understanding <laughs> how to kind of embrace and what's possible and how to uh, look at the systems critically, right? Not take it as like magical oracle that will solve the problem, but like as a useful tool that will be uh, essential to your arsenal of uh, uh, tools you have to deal with the patient. I think that would be very what, would, what would you say is still to come for, for AI? Uh, as it relates to yeah I'm, I'm really hopeful I'm, I'm really looking forward to the time where these multiple modalities start coming together as I had mentioned uh, the uh, so far we have been exposed to what's possible with uh, language models with text like chat GPT you type things come back but uh, we have not really seen that degree of transformative technology applied to imaging uh, right to radiological exams to echoes to ultrasound and we have not really seen systems that combine this all together and can reason and can like fill in the gaps where based on the on, on knowledge of a similar cases where for example genomic assay has been done uh, how, how would you look at this patient the one what's likely their gene mutation that you'll encounter based on this uh, MRI exams I think these systems will come they will be out there in the next uh, three to five years and I'm really looking forward for that to become a reality well thank you Ivan Terapov I really appreciate it thank so you, much Thanks for watching, but now an important disclaimer. 
The content of this video is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Viewers should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they may have and should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.